Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today we want to take a look inside the Takeda Recon Digital Multimeter 6155M, which I demonstrated to you in the last video. Now I've already uh, taken off the cover and first of all we see we have a lot of uh, verti vertical uh, PCBs all with their individual labels so that's quite nice for repair and we can uh, make out at least three distinct sections this is certainly the power supply here here we have the single PCBs for each uh, Nixie display or each digit uh, probably with its own counting circuitry and the rest must be the basic measurement circuitry, the reference voltage, the ADC. Uh, somewhere must be hidden also the time reference, the quartz crystal. But uh, we'll take out uh, each um, PCB and see if we can gather some information. So let's start with the, uh, with the power supply. What you perhaps can see inside is uh, these uh, electrolytics here. I don't know if you can read it, but they are Nippon Chemicon. So already at that time a top quality brand. And here we have the power transistors, certainly for the regulated voltages. So uh, we have five NPN Sanken or Zanken transistors which is even today a high quality brand especially known for hi-fi amplifiers uh, these one are npn silicon transistors and here we have a pnp toshiba a 2sb426 and uh, that's a still a germanium transistor so i don't know if during that time there was the transition from germanium to silicon transistors it might be that PNP power transistors were not available at that time. That's why they ch choose for the PNP, probably for the negative voltage, a germanium power transistor. So uh, here we have the big power transformer. We will also take a look later from underneath because there is also some circuitry underneath. And uh, first of all, let's try to... Um, unscrew here this uh, heatsink. Uh, perhaps we can see a little bit more if we take out this little uh, heatsink here. So I've had really a hard time unlocking one of the two screws. They were probably secured with Loctite or something like that. And just a little trick for you, just use a little bit of freeze spray and then I finally got it loose. I already took a peek. You can already can see this is built like a tank. It weighs around 20 kilograms and really for that time really professional construction. Uh, but we don't see very much now below. There is a big power uh, resistor of 1.2 kilo ohm. What I'm still searching is uh, somewhere a date code. I don't have the same nose as David L. Jones who can smell the year when uh, electronics was built. I lack that. I can only uh, guess the decade from the smell if I'm lucky. Uh, so we can't see very much more although here is a little uh, mains input filter. So already that again a sign of professional quality that even at that time they used um, an input filter. But uh, we don't see much more except for the beautiful cabling which is especially evident on the underside. So let's put that back again and take a peek at these three PCBs and by the way uh, this uh, somebody thinks that this was advertised as the first fully transistorized multimeter so we will not find any integrated circuits here 
but I think I've already spotted something that looks like a tube. We will come to that later. So now let's take a guess what this PCB could be for. Um, this one is already, uh, this is not yet FR2 board, this is still phenolic based boards, uh, but on the other side, which you can see at the moment, uh, there are already FR4 based PCBs. So, can we have a guess what this uh, PCB could be for? Again, I only can see the Nippon Chemicon <coughs> electrolytics all around, but here we have three looks like transistors. Let's see if I can read that. NEC 2SC149 and they are all three. 2SC149. Just let, let me look up for a moment what this is. Yeah, these are medium power 300 milliamps NPN uh, silicon transistors. So I have at the moment no idea. Ah, and what we already see here, these are extremely small transistors here, all in all seven of them. Um, I've never seen such small through-hole transistors. I just take my magnifier just to see what markings they have. So they are only marked as 269 and because they come from Japan uh, that should be 2SC269 and that's exactly what I found. They are also from NEC. MPN small signal transistors with a 200 milliamps collector current, but quite small for that time. And here we have still three metal cans, also from NEC. Let me see. This is a diode. This also a 1S551, 1S552. But I have no idea what this PCB uh, could be for because it's placed near the uh, power electronics, near the voltage uh, generation. It has probably something to do with uh, the power supply, but uh, I have no real idea. And what are these? Are these capacitors? Let me see if I find a marking. No, they say 8NA. They look like uh, varistors, but uh, at that age, I don't know if these are really varistors, but uh, could be. Perhaps you have a guess. So I'm very grateful if anybody has comments about uh, the different components and uh, a guess about what this PCB is really doing. Of course we could uh, some botch wires um, and the PCB you see it's uh, it's shiny and that's not only the copper so it's um, covered with some kind of uh, resin or uh, whatever so kind of conformally coated and that's on both sides. So they already took that measure and the contacts are gold plated. Already a little bit uh, worn out already. So let's put that back again and see if we find something on the other PCBs. Let's take out this one. Okay, we have four, uh, four trimmers here. Again, a few trannies here. 2SC614D and a Hitachi 2SC263. So again, um, my guess is that uh, this is for adjusting four different output voltages from 
uh, from the voltage regulators or for the voltage regulators uh, the, the um, tin here has also in the decades uh, there's a little bit of corrosion so th this is, looks quite dull now and the last PCB that probably belongs to the power supply is this oh what's that lots of transistors this already looks like could already be a counter two four six eight nine so the transistors look like in groups of two this could already be because i've spotted a similar um layout already here in the in the display pcbs with the nixie tubes this could already be a frequency counter or divider circuit uh, perhaps you have a better guess and now let's come to a more interesting PCB and that is this one here and that's where I think I already spotted a tube and what else could this be than a tube so it's not fully transistorized um, we have a little capacitance trimmer big chunky uh, capacitors they look like precision capacitors just from their look but I'm also not sure um, I don't see a quartz crystal here so I need your guess what this PCB could be like um, I don't want to take off here the this uh, felt um, vibration isolation for this tube anyway it has only three connections and the little nipple here on the underside but it even doesn't sound like glass but it must be glass i really have no idea perhaps if you want to then there I can see four electrodes so why are there only three leads coming out of that the designation here reads X91 but that doesn't bring us any further now what is X uh, what does X stand for Q is of course a transistor R is a resistor but what is X? It's certainly not a crystal, or is it? Is it in the end an early version of a crystal? So your guess or your knowledge is welcome. What this could be about. It, it would make sense that this is the, the basic um, frequency generation here because it's already we already saw here directly beside it. Uh, this PCB which looks like a counter or divider circuit this would make sense and um, it's already placed here near to the counting stages for the single digits oops let me slide it in again in the right way so next come uh, we have a five digit multimeter and you can see the least significant digit the PCB has a, a different designation it's a, a 5c31 and the other ones are all identical 5c12 um, so the first stage is a little bit different let's pull out this one here first and here you can see that this part here looks very similar to this part. Yeah, it's nearly identical. 
And the only difference is here the driver stage for uh, the Nixie troop with the, let me put it here. Here we can see the 10 driver transistors for the single digit, um, a resistor array for the anode resistors. And, but this one here, this must be a, a counter stage to divide to, or to count to 10. And because at the back side, uh, we see, saw in the first video, we have a code out connector. So my guess is that on the one side, they make a, uh, they have a BCD, uh, so a, a four stage binary counter, uh, which counts to 10 and then resets. And um, this must be decoded to, for each single uh, number because uh, a, a Nixie tube uh, needs a for each number a single output. So, so it might be um, they are making a binary or BCD division here uh, to get this out to the code out so that you only need four pins per digit. Otherwise you would need 10 uh, output lines and that would make for five digits would make 50 output lines. I still have to, to count them and see where the connections are. And then they decode uh, with the diodes perhaps um, the, the BCD output, the digital or binary output for each single number here inside our Nixie display. So and it might be, uh, let me pull it in again, oh, we leave it out and compare it to the higher digits. They look nearly identical. So at, at the first moment I see no big difference there. Let me lay, lay it side by side so that you can better see it. Uh, the only difference is here in the, in the input stage. Here we have an extra transistor, but the counting stage looks absolutely identical as well as the display stage. And the only difference is here this one transistor plus a few capacitors and this resistor here. And uh, so this could be just simply the the input conditioning or whatever. Anyway, um, I have a guess that perhaps um, this he, um, this here is the main frequency generation of uh, I don't know 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, one megahertz, whatever. And this stage here, which is near the, to the power supply, uh, this is simply the time base uh, because we can change from one second uh, time base to 0.1 second time base. And this is the divider by 10 for the um, one second ten, uh, time base. Might be, not sure. So in the meantime, I've taken out all of the five uh, display PCBs and then what we see here is a very big capacitor C66. This could be the input capacitor for the AC voltage uh, measurement. At the moment, I cannot trace the two leads here going off. Uh, they go underneath and we we only can be 100% sure when I've taken, when I turn it around and uh, there's also a, still a shield plate to take off. Um, but let's now come to these two PCBs and take a look at them. Well, nearly all, each PCB has one or more botch wires, as you can see, even a few botch capacitors 
And this also again looks like a divider stage. I don't know what this component here is. It says type 20. Uh, let's turn it around. Soshin. It reads Soshin and there is still a barely recognizable number. GM28YC471J3. So, um, also again, it looks like a divider, but I'm not 100% sure. And because this here looks a little bit like a shielded cable, um, and we have a little trimmer. Uh, so th th this probably also has to do with the time base. But again, your guess is welcomed or your knowledge what this PCB could, what the functionality could be. And oops, the last one here, pull it a little bit downward. The last PCB in the f in the main section here also has these strange could be strange kinds of capacitors, but I'm not really sure. Again, a few medium power transistors, so really a, a little trimmer. Uh, I have no idea what this is good for. It could, in theory, be the the AC voltage measuring circuit because we, we have seen in the first video that this is only an averaging AC measurement and not a true RMS. But it could also be the current source for the ohms measurement. That's what, what my guess is. And now let's change to what is on the other side and then we finally go to the underside because there's also some electronics. So on the right we have the rotary switches with uh, lots of layers for the uh, input range and the different calibration check um, positions and down below which you can hardly see the selector for the type of measurement if dc voltage or ac voltage etc and um, lots of cabling here again a a thread with dozens of cables going from the input selector here to this part now let's pull out the pcbs and see what is ooh what's that again we have some tubes uh, this time they are designated with a V which probably stands for valve the Euro European like expression for tubes and a few big chunky medium voltage capacitors again I have no idea a little trimmer what this PCB could be working for um, I also can't see any designation again the beautiful vibration isolation with this felt around the tubes but I have no idea what this could be for because this is the uh, measurement section this could also be the uh, AC to DC conversion might be but uh, give me a hint what <laughs> this circuit could be good for two strange looking transistors 3N3645 also never saw this outline for 
a transistor with a black kind dome like cup cupola so and here we have two identical PCBs each designed 6H26 and uh, with a cable and with some high frequency stuff because you can see uh, the bare tint copper here um, so and thermally coupled transistors and these are even FETs because they say S, G and D so source, uh, gate and drain while these are um, bipolar transistors again gold plated transistors 3 if it are transistors with 4 leads they have to look it up 3 SK21 and again a trimmer so this is <laughs> really a mystery to, to me what this could be good for especially because it are two so and there there's still a shield hmm could this be a positive and negative reference and we have these two blue cables going here to the range switch and also to the check selector and this one uh, to see so they are obviously built identical and um, yeah again I can let me see if there are any special transistors they are all from the 2SC series so here we have a 2SA 537A also it looks like it's gold plated and well no idea <laughs> what this circuitry is doing i'll leave this out just uh, not to damage the cabling so let's pull out here this pcb which is shielded from both sides and obviously has a daughter board and oh what's that two metal cans just pull it a little bit closer and also a shielded cable let's see if we can unscrew this yes Hmm. What the heck is that? I can see two germanium diodes and a very small uh, toroidal core here with a capacitor soldered on top of that. Hmm, is that the AC DC converter? Let's take a look what we have here the same circuitry hmm quite interesting two tdk little this must be some little transformers they are labeled as pt340 so is this an early version of a switch mode power supply that is interesting never seen something like that So, and finally, we still have this large PCB here. Um, the only thing I can see at the moment, here are three uh, holes uh, for trimmers. So, because there are three and we have four input main input ranges, this could be the input divider and the trimmers for the uh, exact trimming of the input uh, resistor divider so this could be the main 
analog to digital converter or the counting circuit or the integrator. I don't know after which, uh, with which principle um, the analog to digital conversion is done here. Um, I've already taken out the screws here, but it still is fixed with some screws uh, on the lower side of the PCB. So uh, let's first turn around the whole multimeter, take a look on the, on the lower side and see if we can finally uh, unlock here this PCB to take a closer look at it. So we had our last PCB on the upper side sitting exactly here um, and there are no more screws so we can't um, pull it out. We probably have only access here from the side so I will put this thing on its side and see if we can take out the side plate. So I've already uh, taken out all the screws of this piece of sheet metal and the holes here are not for ventilation. Uh, below each of them is a trimmer or a capacitance trimmer. So let's try to lift this up and aha! So this is the input divider stage and the first time now that we also see some markings AC voltage attenuator with a 1000 volt calibration uh, trimmer, a 110 volt calibration trimmer, some uh, parallel capacitors, precision resistors marked as 0.1% uh, all of them and they are from Electrome. I don't know if they are still in existence. What do we have here? The DC voltage attenuator also with some, some calibration trimmers or potential meters. 1000 volts calibration, 100 volts, 0.1 and 10 volts. I won't touch them uh, because I'm afraid to not be able without a manual to recalibrate them. Also transistors, let's see what's the biggest one, 2.99 mech ohms, 900 kilo ohms, 3 mech ohms, 3 mech ohms, okay, oh, strange values, 10.08 kilo ohms. And here we have the DC current, the shunt resistors, 1 ohm, 10 ohms. I can't find any, any um, percentage marking, but they should be also 0.1%. And the last we have the ohm attenuator, 10 kilo ohms, 100k, 1 mech ohm, 1 kilo ohm, a coarse and a calibrate potentiometer. So I won't touch any of them um, because I'm really afraid that I can't get that any better. Also these capacitance trimmers here uh, looking like a true tube. Um, they also have a slot on, on the upper side to make, a, um, to make them trimmable. So uh, there's no active circuitry here. Uh, these are only the attenuators or the voltage dividers, how we could better call them. And the only PCB that really has some readable markings on them so that, w that we don't have to guess uh, what, what the PCB is really doing. So quite nice and for that time that was probably uh, the nearly the best in precision you could buy with 0.1% resistors. Today that's nothing special. You can get them probably for a lower price 10 or 50 times better in precision. But anyway, uh, top of the notch for that time. 
So this is how the underside looks like. Now of course all this mirror reversed, uh, if you remember from the top side. Here we have the power section with the transformer outputs and this 6.3 volt output already tells us that there must be tubes inside because this is the typical heater voltage for the tubes. So a lot of bypass capacitors. So and what looked on one PCB like MOFs, um, metal oxide varistors, these must be capacitors, probably the 100 nanofarad in parallel to the electrolytics. Again, all of them Nippon Chemicon. And I've already unscrewed some of the shieldings here. And well, not much to see. Some power resistors, the kind of backplane here for the circuitry above. This is here the measurement uh, section. And here we have the, the digital section with the Nixie tubes. And I think I already spotted, if you remember from the first video, we had this intermittent failure that the display went out. And I will enlarge this a little bit now in a second so that you can see it better. So look what I found here. This power resistor is loose and it was barely touching here the, the solder junction. And if we take it off, here is also, uh, I have to again shift the thing a little bit so that you can see what's going on here with this. PCB. We have lots of diodes. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 4, 6, 20, 30, 34 of them if I counted them right. So this could be something like a kind of decoder circuit. Otherwise, uh, I don't know why that many diodes would make sense. So let's check if this 10k power resistor here is still okay. Yes, it gives 10k with my multimeter. So let's resolder it. Uh, perhaps somebody before tried to unscrew it. It was just touching here this little standoff and apparently there was too much mechanical stress or the solder joint was bad. Let's resolder that and uh, see if our problem with the, um, with the intermittent display uh, turning off, uh, the lights going out, if that goes away with it. Just a second I will get my solder iron. So the resistor is resoldered back in place. And I've already connected the power cord with mains power and just make a quick check. Yeah, the Nixie displays are lighting up again. So that was in the end also a repair video. So there was still the question open. Um, the connector, the input B with the, for the ohms measurement, where this is going and how it is connected. Well, it's not very easy to see, but there are all in all five wires soldered to it. One of them is a shielded cable, and which goes directly to one of these PCBs. And well, that, that's probably, no, in fact, two shielded cables here these two. I don't know if I find the time to kind of reverse engineer or uh, trace the single leads where they are going to to find out how the ohms measurement is really working and how to connect a uh, probe. So for a final overview let's still uh, sum up our guesses. The most easy part were here the Nixie dividers and drivers. 
this probably this is here for the different voltages to adjust them we probably here with have our quartz base and a first factor of 10 divider stage we suppose this is also has to either is the current source for the ohms measurement or it is another power supply voltage regulator so uh, i think because this pcb here is directly next to the input divider stage this is perhaps the main adc because it's first of all it's the most complex pcb we had uh, with these strange metal cans and their voltage inside so perhaps this is the integrator might be but i can't tell for sure and uh, this these two here should be the input amplifier for the high frequency counter where well, high frequency in that time meant I will put them inside later that meant uh, one megahertz but uh, strange is that there are two of them so why do you need for a f for an input stage why do you need two identical amplifiers it couldn't be for the positive or an, a negative part of the of your uh, wave input hmm. and this still is a mystery here with the two little tubes here could this be the ac to dc converter or is it one of these so Really, I'm, uh, I would like to hear your comments and suggestions and guesses what the different PCBs are good for and I will put everything together again and see if it works again. So let's turn it on again and see if it works. Yes, display is there. 10 kilohertz check is there. Let's see if the plus and minus check are again back one point seven two twenty just drifting around now it has stabilized the minus check yeah five seven digits out uh, so this might uh, it has probably drifted a little bit uh, but it might also be drift because we it's not warmed up at the moment and um, we don't have the outer case installed so the temperature inside is quite different from where i made the calibration but in the meantime i've had a night of uh, thinking in between and first of all Perhaps you remember here on the back side we had this switch storage and non-storage which was set to non-storage and now I will show you what happens if we set it to storage. Just have to find it. And now the, it is latching in fact so it keeps uh, the value during the measurement period. And uh, that way we can also increase the sample rate as it is called here so the measurement cycle without getting any constant current uh, so that is a nice thing so I think it's even nicer to see the counting as also one viewer said in his comment um, but anyway um, next thing I noticed is the conversion principle must be a voltage to frequency conversion because no matter what the displayed value is we have a fixed measurement cycle of either one second or 0.1 second and that means the end result is always reached after exactly 0.1 or one second and that means that 
the analog input voltage is converted to a frequency and we have a fixed gate time of either one second or 0.1 second and that way it must be a voltage to frequency converter and because we have a plus and minus calibration I think that the two identical PCBs here in the in the measurement section uh, they are for positive and negative uh, voltages, the voltage to frequency converters and the single shielded, double shielded or on both sides shielded PCB is probably the input amplifier for the frequency measurement. But then one thing, one other thing dawned on me. Well, we probably have identified the quartz crystal as this strange looking tube which has only three leads coming out so but we need all in all three frequencies we somehow have to get the 10 kilohertz check frequency so probably let's assume it's a 100 kilohertz low frequency crystal and we have this PCB directly near to the assumed quartz uh, PCB uh, so this could be the divider from 100 kilohertz to the 10 kilohertz check frequency but then we further have to divide this down to 0.1 second and 1 second for the quartz stabilized or generated gate times and they must be absolutely stable and so we need another division of a factor of 10,000 um, and perhaps and we I don't think that this could be realized only with transistors on on that one PCB so perhaps um, the the single PCBs for each Nixie tube here do not only contain the counters for the digits of the Nixie tubes but they also have dividers by 10 stages implemented which do not serve for the counting process uh, but serve to div further divide down the 10 kilohertz frequency down to 0.1 second and 1 second so that is my guess I have to do some uh, probing uh, still to find out um, and I will give you uh, high resolution photos of all the PCBs so that you can take a look at them and tell me your guesses and I've noticed another thing uh, we have this 50 pin connector uh, on the back side that is labeled as code out and in fact all 50 pins have a cabling on it so for each digit we have uh, 10 decoded lines because each anode or each number in a Nixie display needs a single decoded control line and so in fact they are not transferred into BCD code so that you need only four lines per digit but apparently all 10 digits, uh, all five digits times 10 decoded lines are connected to that back connector with the code out labeling. So I still have to do th some thinking which of the PCBs is for the uh, generation of the plus and minus uh, calibration voltage. So there must be somewhere a voltage reference inside and I have to identify the uh, AC to DC converter and the ohms, the, the current source for the ohms measurement. So perhaps you can help me with the high resolution photos. I will give you a link in the video descriptions or in the comments uh, where you can download them. Anyway, now I'm quite happy that this is now also not only partially analyzed how it works but also that it is repaired and fully working and I think it's always a nice addition to my lab 
just because of the beauty of the Nixie displays. So that was it. Perhaps still a... Sh I will perhaps, if I've identified all circuits, an additional follow-up video. But anyway, for this time, that was it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a bit thumbs up. Has become a bit longer than I thought. And uh, see you next time here, here at Kanka Labs. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.